actually good. Hi. My name is Max Lucero. This is Jose Ochoa. You're my Sacramento. <laughs> Just kidding. What's up? Um, anybody out there? Nobody's in yet. I know we're yeah. starting. Probably see a little pop up in the corner when people join. Probably <laughs> waiting at seven. They probably longer at seven. Oh, we see one person. <clears throat> we still got five minutes, but we we just want to like. Who's there? I see one eye. Type in who you are. I see two eyes. Type in who you are. Probably uh, Janet and Virginia. They're always the first ones in. Josiah, Jaden, Sherry, Janet, <laughs> Mom. Anybody out there? Hi, Mom. Oh, it's Virginia. No, it was Virginia. How was your day, Virginia? <laughs> Virginia. <laughs> Yo, mama. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> How was your day, mom? See, comments come in late. That's the second. So we're here in Redding, California. We're at a preaching conference. And we're just uh, learning uh, how to become better communicators. How to be better preachers. Uh, so... The conference is, is actually the conference is called preachers preaching and so um it's a four-day conference and you enjoying yourself max i'm very enjoying it a lot we're learning a lot about preaching ineffectively and our community that we have in this place is extraordinary to watch that just over the course of what two days <laughs> we've built a great sense of community and a great sense of uh binding with these people who are first strangers and uh, that's one thing that um, I really enjoy about being here. Yeah, we got some people here in Reading. Actually, people have flew flew out here. Uh, we we met a person from Minnesota. Mm -hmm. We have people from San Francisco, <clears throat> Sacramento. People from all over Northern California have come to this preaching conference, and so uh, we're trying to become better preachers. Uh, I was telling Max the other day that like Kobe Bryant, uh, when he was alive, he used to practice basketball all the time, and and he was one of the best basketball players of all time. And so there's always room for improvement. So we're both trying to become better communicators. Mm -hmm. We we both want to become better preachers. Mm -hmm. So. Um, does anybody have any prayer requests before we get started? Still have a couple minutes. Type in any prayer requests you may have. If you have any prayer requests, feel free to type in your prayer requests. I know some people are going to be viewing this on YouTube later. Thank you, Mom, for posting this or uh, putting this on our, our YouTube channel. Hope City Church, we have a, a YouTube channel. And uh, so you always could watch some of Max's messages. And we now have an app, too. Yep. So you could uh, go to hopecitysac.net, download our app, and you could watch past messages that you have missed. So if you don't want to... Um display your prayer request out open in the comment section you could always private message the hope city page and uh we'll see it then as well yeah that's a good idea so uh just send us a, a private message and we could uh pray for you what's up hey jj miss you boy miss you son i don't miss you <laughs> So pray for some ladies here. One is fighting cancer. Two fell down. Both are recovering. And one lady fell down and is recovering. Okay, at 7 o'clock. Uh, Max, do you want to pray for the study and pray for uh, the, the ladies that are living at my mom's uh, apartment complex? Yeah. 
Heavenly Father, we come before you before we embark on this study. And uh, you heard the prayer requests that has been known tonight. Uh, these ladies that have fell down and one diagnosed with cancer. Well, we know that all throughout your text and your word, you are what is called the great physician, the great healer, and all that it took for every single person was for you to either walk in the room or just experience one simple touch yes. from your holy hand. So we pray, Father, that that very act happen right now yes. in all these ladies' lives. In the Touch name of them. Jesus, that all Touch demonic them. pains and hurts and troubles and tribulation and issues with their physical anatomy yes. be dispersed in the name of Jesus and yes. be dispelled yes. from the presence of their bodies. Yes. We love you, Heavenly Father, and we thank you for this time to study your word yes. and speak through Jose and I and let everyone uh, receive wisdom tonight. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 So I got one announcement before we get started into the message. As you know, if you haven't heard, uh, recently on Tuesday, the announcement the announcement was made um, that all the church building, you can't close the church, but because of uh, there has been a bump with COVID cases in Sacramento, uh, for safety reasons, the buildings are now closed. So let's pray that we could have church again inside the building. It's starting to get a little cold. But the good news is we can have, we're going to have church this Sunday outdoors at 12. It's going to be 66 degrees. So just bring a sweater. But here's the beautiful thing. Uh, having church out, outside, as you know, those of you that come to Hope City Church, uh, there's a Taco Bell drive through and there's hundreds of people that go through the Taco Bell drive through And so we have the opportunity to be a witness this Sunday. We could worship God, and, and a lot of people could hear the message. We're going to bring a tag team message this Sunday. So while people are going through the drive through we're able to communicate the message of Jesus Christ to our community. So I hope that doesn't discourage you. Uh, we can't have church indoors, but we can still have church outdoors. And and if you look at the gospel, Jesus sometimes preached inside the synagogue. Sometimes he was preaching on the lake. Sometimes he was preaching uh, on the streets. And so we can't limit God to a building. Can I get a big amen? Amen. So uh, with that said, uh, the topic is how to share your faith. And so last night I couldn't sleep. No, we couldn't. I woke up. So I wrote down 21 ways to share your faith. And then uh, I'm going to ask Max uh, to share how he he's able to share his faith. And obviously there's probably 121 ways to share your faith. But here are 21 ways to share your faith. Through dance. Uh, as you know, I'm a break dancer. <laughs> So I started a dance crew called J Crew when I was a youth leader. And so I used to dance. And after I would dance, I would share my testimony with like young people and with adults. And so sometimes when you hear the word preach, you think of a, a pastor speaking on Sundays. But actually the word preach can be translated to communicate. So there's different ways to, to communicate the gospel. You could do it through dance. Through a letter. I recently wrote a letter to a, a person, I won't tell you his name, but he's locked up. He's doing at least five, maybe ten years in prison, but I shared the gospel with him. And and he sounds re very receptive to the gospel right now. He, he, he told me when he gets out, he's going to come to our church. So you could write a letter to somebody. Uh, you could share the gospel through art. You could share the gospel through Facebook. That's what we're doing right now. You could share the gospel through Instagram, through drama. You could share the gospel through music, uh, through word of mouth, through a testimony. I think by how you live your life, by not cursing. I was talking to Max when I was working at UPS as far as I know, I was like the only supervisor that didn't cuss. And so I got to share the gospel just by, by being different, not by not being like the other supervisors. Uh, so sometimes 
you're able to communicate uh, communicate the gospel it's not by what you say but what you don't say um, we could communicate the gospel by giving I'm gonna put uh, Max on blast right now so we, we had Panda Express uh, tonight for dinner and there was a lady behind us uh, that Max, God put it on Max, Max's heart to treat her for dinner. And she was so thankful. She told Max, like, thank you twice. And, and, and Max started sharing Jesus with her. And so one way you can share the gospel is through giving. And, and those of you that give to Hope City Church, those that uh, give uh, because of your financial support, we're here. Actually, uh, the church has helped us to pay for us to get this hotel and to go to this preaching conference so we could become better preachers. And your tithes and offerings have helped uh, local missions and global missions. So when you give, you're actually helping to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. So giving is a, a way to, to share the gospel. I learned um, we can share the gospel by praying for people. It's called prayer evangelism. So start praying for those that loved one that you're thinking of. That like, we all know people that that are far from Jesus. Start praying for that person. That maybe Jesus will re reveal Himself to that person through a dream. That's happened uh, in the Muslim world. There's a number, countless of Muslims that have been having dreams of Jesus Christ and waking up. And accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, as Lord and Savior. So, uh, one way you could share the gospel, you don't look at it that that way, but by praying for people, it's called prayer evangelism. Uh, you could share the gospel by being kind. You could share the gospel by loving others, by forgiving people. You could share the gospel by being joyful and positive. You could share the the gospel by being a peacemaker. You could be. You could share the gospel by building bridges. How many you know? How many you know that we live in a world where there's a lot of division. Maybe God has called you to build bridges. We could share the gospel by loving our enemies. We could share the gospel by preaching and by giving God praise. Even when things aren't going right, we, we continue to just give God praise. Mm -hmm. And lastly, Josiah, Jaden, listen up. We can share the gospel through video games. So I play Fortnite all the time, and my tagger name is Jesus Freak 75 So I'm literally sharing the gospel when I'm playing Fortnite with people. And so I'm getting people to think about Jesus while I'm playing video games. So the, I just thought of 21 ways. Type in a way that you share the gospel. Because we're all called to share the gospel. Mm -hmm. Not just the pastor. If you're a Christian, you're called to share the gospel. So uh, type in a way that you have shared your faith mm -hmm. lately. If you could please type in how you have shared your faith. And so Max, I'm gonna ask you now, how do you share your faith with your friends and family, uh, classmates, teachers? What are some ways uh, that you have shared your faith with others? One thing I've learned, and I told Jose this earlier this evening, is that pretty much anything um, someone tells you or asks you can be segued and bridge to the gospel um, just example how did you sleep last night or how has your morning been and that's a very easy and convenient um, question uh, to insert Jesus and a praise report into that just I prayed uh, I prayed with Jesus I had a way I had a good night's sleep last night because I had my nightly prayer and then you could ask do you pray nightly or um, do you believe in Jesus? And it's it's really, um, it's it's simple, but it can also be a giant for some people. And I know I was talking to my mom. I'm gonna kind of put her on the spot. I was talking to my mom recently, 
and um, she was yearning for boldness. And um, one thing I said to her was, uh, no matter, I, I, I told her, if you don't have boldness, it's gonna be uncomfortable sharing your faith. When you do get boldness, it's gonna be uncomfortable sharing your faith. Mm. Uncomfortability is kind of like an illusion the devil uses to prevent you from sharing your faith. He kind of draws this imaginary line between you and the other person and saying, if you step over this line, you're in trouble. But the reality is when you do step over that line, he's in trouble. Uh, he kind of uh, tried to use his, our nerves or our um, preventing and hindering thoughts to prevent us from doing what Christ commanded his disciples to do, to make disciples out of all nations, out of all peoples. And so do you want me to share my verses? We'll pray for you, Josiah. You had three shots today. Um, we're going to uh, pray pray for Josiah. We'll pray for you in a little bit, Josiah. But he, uh, Max is going to share some verses with you that might help you and encourage you. Uh, when it comes to sharing the gospel, it's throughout the Bible. Uh, Jesus actually said, Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And the good news, at the end of that passage, Jesus says, Lo, I'm with you always to the end of the age. So Christ, through the Spirit of God, we are able to share the gospel with others. So you're not doing it alone. Before you, sh you share that passage, I was thinking about um, the way I share the gospel is through relationships. So I didn't plan on sharing this, but so I have a, a good friend named Brian. Uh, we went to school together. And so I will never forget, uh, he friended me on Facebook. Hey, Brian, if you're listening. And so I sent him a private message. I was like, hey, let's get some coffee. And he's like, yeah, let's get some coffee. And so we, I was a little nervous meeting with Brian because I, I didn't see him. At, <clears throat> I, I haven't, I, I think it was 10 years or maybe longer since I've seen my friend Brian. So I asked the Holy Spirit, give me the holy boldness to share my faith with Brian. So I had coffee with my friend Brian and I shared my faith with Brian and I invited him I invited Brian to church guess what I baptized Brian and now he's in Bible college he's about to get his third degree uh, or a second degree in Bible and theology he's working on his master's degree he got his bachelor's degree now he's working on his master's degree and I see him he's gonna be a Bible teacher someday so you, you never know what's going to happen when you share your faith with people. They might come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. You might end up baptizing that person someday. Uh, you, what's most beautiful, you're, you're going to end up seeing that person in heaven with you someday. Mm -hmm. So my, my encouragement to you is look for those opportunities to share your faith. I promise you God will give you those opportunities. But when he gives you those opportunities, you just got to go for it. And um, that girl that um, Jose mentioned earlier, the one that um, we paid her food, we paid for food. She looked really young, um, and I'll be honest here. When I first saw her walk into Panda Express, um, I I don't know what it was, but I, I guess it was kind of like uh, the spirit in me talking to me, saying that she's hurting or uh, she's struggling with something. And um, the way it happened, I just knew it was God that wanted me to show her grace, show her love, show the love of Christ, and pay for her food. And the thing about sharing your faith is that you don't know how much that person needed it. Mm. You don't know um, what that did for them. And if it didn't do anything, you didn't lose anything. And if it did do something, you've gained so much. You really gained a lot of traction in that person's life if it did do something for them. So, um, and, and she said thank you like yeah. two or three times. And I could tell that she was moved. And right now, I bet you she's thinking about the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the whole point. Um, even if they, they just get to thinking and pondering about Jesus, that's mm -hmm. where it starts really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start sharing from 1 Peter 3.13. Uh, actually, I'm going to start at 3.12. 
For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And that passage is quoted from Psalms 34. Verse 13, and he and who he is and who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good. So when you approach somebody, what are you afraid of? When you approach people that maybe don't look like the nicest people, the battle is the Lord's. It's not your battle. You're not in it alone. God's not sending you mm -hmm. in there uh, without his spirit. So who can harm you? Who can uh, be against you when you know who's for you? Uh, verse 14. But and if ye suffer for righteousness sake, happy are ye. So rejoice in persecution. Rejoice if someone mocks you. If you get rejected um, when sharing your faith. And you suffer for righteousness' sake. Happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror. Don't be afraid of the uh, the rejection or the mockery or the persecution they may feed back to you. Be glad in it. Neither be troubled. Don't worry about it. Don't fret over it. Don't stress over it. You did what Christ had you do. In verse 15, the crux of what I want to communicate. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you, with meekness and fear. I want to extract the word answer, and I was I told Jose about this this week. This word answer, the Greek word is apologia, and it's where we get our word apologetics from. And I know um, nowadays apologetics, that term, has kind of been reserved for the, the PhD withholding uh, scholars and biblical uh, researchers and those that are meant to debate and uh, those that are meant to be on the front lines with all the theological background, all the seminary background, all the college educated background. But nothing could be farther from the truth. The word uh, apologetics, apologia, is simply to mean an, uh, to give an answer. That's that's all it is to defend your faith, to give an answer. So it can be as simple as when you mention someone, or you mention something, um, or you mention Jesus to someone about a certain thing, and they just ask, "Why should I accept Jesus? Or why do you believe Jesus? Or what can Jesus do for me?" And you give them an answer. That's apologetics. You're doing apologetics. You communicate the gospel effectively to your target audience. And sometimes. Um... Some someone might say, "Well, I don't know all the Bible, so I can't share my faith." Mm -hmm. But I won't ever forget. I was at UPS. Jason Helmar, if you're if you're, he's one of my friends on Facebook. He's not actually a believer in God, but he was asking me all these questions about my faith, and God was giving me the answer right then and there. And I didn't have to study the Bible; I just knew what to say right away. And finally, Jason looked at me. He's like. Jose, you're on fire. I, I, and I, didn't, I didn't know I was on fire, but he, he just knew that I had an answer for all his questions. And I can't take the credit. The Holy Spirit was giving me the answers. So, so don't be afraid to share your faith because, oh, I don't know all, I don't know all the answers. Mm -hmm. God knows all the answers. He'll give you the answers when you, you need them most. Uh -huh. And I know uh, Dr. Vodibakum Vodibak kind of pointed out one time, Apologetics, we've kind of de-spiritualized apologetics. Yeah. Um, uh, the reason, the entire reason for apologetics was not never to win an argument. It was never to just win a debate. It was to get to Jesus, to get to the gospel. Uh, I know Todd White said it as well. You don't know uh, the answer to an objection? Share your testimony. Yeah. You, you don't know anything else to say? Share your testimony. If the gospel is, when it comes down to you, is pretty much simply... Who is Jesus and what has he done for you? And, uh, uh, and, and that's, I like what you said about share your testimony. No one can argue against your testimony. I was having a debate with a family member. Uh, I won't tell you who. Uh, but anyhow, he, he was like, I don't believe in God. And, and, he, and he, I, I've been to all kinds of churches. I've read the Bible two times. I, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. I'm an atheist. And, and finally... The only thing I could tell him is, hey, all I know is Jesus has changed my life. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't argue with that because mm -hmm. Jesus has changed my life. So don't be afraid to share your testimony. And you could ask my brother. You could ask my mom. You could ask my friend Jody. Jesus has changed my life. I'm not the same Jose I was. I'm not the same Jose 
that I, I was when I was a teenager or, or even 10, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So sh don't be afraid to share your testimony. And I've learned you got to have like a one minute testimony, a five minute testimony, and a 20 minute testimony. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you're not going to be able to share your whole story. So you, you show up, share a part of your, your testimony, how God has changed you mm -hmm. and how God has saved you. Yeah. And with your testimony, you really don't have to practice it because it's, it's already here. Yeah. And why share your testimony? Because it's true. It happened. Yeah. And that is probably one of the um, uh, most compelling, but also most uh, uh, easiest routes you can go in just sharing the gospel. Yeah. Uh, it's not such a complicated issue. The only way it gets complicated is when you're battling yourself and attempting to even step into that circle mm -hmm. of um, sharing your faith. But like I said, uh, the devil uses the illusion of uncomfortability to uh, dissuade you from sharing your faith. But we got to remember that the cross is not comfortable. And, and you can share your, your faith by inviting someone to church. Mm -hmm. My brother, who's online right now, he's the one that first invited me to church. Like he said, hey, bro, you want to go to youth group? And I, I could have said no, but I said yes. And I'm thankful that my brother invited me to church because that night at church, I heard the gospel for the first time. And on the way home, a lady named Vicki, you guys heard my testimony. She led me to the Lord at the age of 15. But it all started with my brother inviting me to church. Mm -hmm. So one way you can share your faith is by simply inviting someone to church this Sunday. Yeah. And trust me, we're going to share Jesus this Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's, you, every Sunday I'm going to talk about the cross and the resurrection. 90% mm -hmm. of the time you're going to hear that message at, at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one one last thing before I pass it over to your scriptures. Um, I heard this said once. Um, I'm not sure who it was from. But um, when discussing the uh, the topic of sharing your faith, um, it's a, I, I keep this in mind when I'm in public, when I'm at Walmart, when I'm at a restaurant, anywhere. How much do you have to hate someone to know that eternal life is possible and not tell them? So keep that in mind when you're uh, out That's in true. public anywhere. That that person, when, you, when you've been renewed in Christ, every person looks different to you. Mm -hmm. That every person, God was willing to die and go bankrupt on the cross for that person. No matter if you wanted to choose them, it's not up to you who you choose because the people, we learned this this week, the people who are, aren't at the table are sometimes the one that God wants. The people who aren't um, in the scope of chosen are the ones that God chooses. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I wanted to share today. Well, and in the Bible, uh, you read about the wrath of God. That's scary. And, and Jesus talked about hell a number of times. So if I could keep it real with you, I, I am motivated to share the gospel because I don't want my worst enemy, not that I have more grace than God, but I don't want my worst enemy to go to hell. So I'm sharing Jesus pe with people because I was on that road to hell. And thankfully, my brother invited me to church. Thankfully, I made the decision to receive Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. So I think th there is this motivation that we're not promised tomorrow. Like, I, I won't ever forget, I met a, a guy named Brandon, uh, and he was in his 20s, and he got, he was drinking and driving, or he lost control of his car, and he, he hit a, a tree, and I got a phone call from him that night. I missed the call. I wish I would have answered the call but it went to voicemail and he just wanted to talk to me and I could have shared my faith with him uh, I shared my faith with him already but I could have talked to him more about Jesus before he died now he's he's in another world mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm praying that he's with Jesus but God gave me the holy boldness to share Jesus with Brandon before he died and so we, we all have loved ones and don't you want to share Jesus with your loved ones, with your friends? Because the Bible says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. And so, we need a Savior. 
And Jesus says that he came to seek and save the lost. Yeah. I was lost. Max, you were lost. Mm -hmm. But thank God, one day we had a revelation that, you know, I'm a sinner. I need God's forgiveness. I need Jesus. I need salvation. So I want to share uh, two verses with you, if I could. Uh, th hopefully the, this verse will like encourage you when it comes to sharing your faith. It says, My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. See, Paul, he was a better preacher than me, than Max, than anybody at this preaching conference. Literally, because he started churches all over the world. So he must have been a really good preacher where he, wherever he went, like people would listen, get saved, and, and he had the power of the Holy Spirit where God was using them to heal people in, uh, during the first century. But he says, like, I'm actually not the best preacher. I'm not that great of a preacher. And he, he says, this is the key but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom but on God's power. So Paul says, all right, the secret, reci the secret, secret recipe to my preaching isn't my words per se, it's the Holy Spirit giving me the, the power to preach those words. And so every Sunday, that is my prayer. God, help me to preach with the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I believe that power is in you. That power is in you. So the next time you you're, you feel like hesitant to pre, to share your faith, pray, God, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the boldness to share my faith. And trust me, God will give you the boldness to share your testimony. He'll give you the boldness to, the boldness to share your faith. And the message is simple. Jesus died on the cross. He was buried and rose on the third day. How long did that take me? How long did that take? Five seconds. Five seconds. Why are we so scared to share that message? Jesus died on the cross. He was buried and rose on the third day. That's the simple gospel truth. And if you put your faith in the Son of God, maybe you haven't done that. If you put your faith in the Son of God and you ask Jesus, Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as Lord and Savior. I believe that you... He died on the cross and rose on the third day. Romans 10, 9 says that we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's a promise. So um, let's not get away from, from that core doctrine, that core message that, that Jesus died on the cross, was buried and rose on the third day. So that has to be an element of our testimony. And sometimes it takes time to get there. Like I said, uh, the way I share my faith is I build relationships with people. And once I build a relationship with people, I, I'm going to share what's on my heart. The Lord says, out of, the abundant, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you're never talking about Jesus, that means Jesus isn't really in your heart. Why, why is it okay? We, we could talk about football. We could talk about basketball. We could talk about how much money we make. We could talk about our occupation. We could talk about politics. Why can't we talk about Jesus? Mm -hmm. we, could, we could talk about... Um, I've, I've heard at my job grown men. Grown men whining, complaining about how they have to go to their home to their wives every night. How they just got more work put on their shoulders. How this customer was this, this and that. And I'm just looking like, are you serious? Grown men doing these things. And they could talk about, demean, do anything with their mouths. And yet, what power has been bestowed upon us that we should shut our mouths about the most divine, uh, most substantial thing that all of these people need? That's and we just true. seal our mouths on that. Yeah. But we gotta, 
there's like a, a spiritual hand covering a lot of Christians mouths yeah and this this and this and these not these <laughs> these you work your hands you speak with your mouth you live your life in accordance with the gospel and you are a light yeah and, and what's interesting is we we hear some crazy things like people will gossip they'll spread the gossip or we all have known people that talk nasty and, and they'll they'll share stories I, I was working at ups i won't tell you who but he comes up to me and he knows i'm a christian he's like Hey, I got to tell you something. And he's smirking and laughing. And he's like, I cheated on my wife. And I was like, you did? I was like, why did you cheat on your wife? He's like, oh, she's pregnant right now. And she won't let me have sex with her right now. So I can't wait. So I cheated on her. And he's laughing. So he's, he's telling me, I think he felt bad for what he did, but he was still smirking and laughing about cheating on his wife so this person at UPS has the guts to tell me that you know I cheat on my wife should we have the guts to tell people about Jesus yeah. what's holding us back and so there's been times and I shared this on Sunday like I have chickened out there's been times I, I've been afraid to share my faith but um and I, I, but I keep going, mm -hmm. like I don't stop. And so I want you to keep going, don't stop. Maybe you chickened out once or twice, but the next time you have an opportunity, go for it. Yeah. Don't be afraid. So I wanna share one more Bible verse with you. Acts chapter one, verse eight. And th this verse has helped me to, with my faith. Jesus says this, and these, is, these are the good Lord's final words. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. And so Jesus says that you don't have to share this testimony by yourself, on your own strength, that the Holy Spirit will empower you. And so God is going to use all all of us to share the good news to all nations and so i want to encourage you to start let's start with our own nation let's start with our own neighborhood if you have money uh go on a mission trip we're planning on we're planning on going on a mission trip to israel uh, god willing next year to share the gospel with the jews to share the gospel with muslims and so we have Jews, we have Muslims, we have atheists, we have non-believers in our country today. Let's look for opportunities to share our faith. Mm -hmm. And we start off by developing relationships with people. L let me say this last thing. 90% of people that come to Christ, come to Christ through relationships. So your mission field is that eight to 15 people that are in your sphere of influence. That's your mission field. Your, your co-workers, your family members, your neighbors, the people that you see on a regular base, basis, that's your mission field. Those are the people that you need to pray for. Those are the people that you need to invite to church. And those are the people that you need to share your testimony with. You have anything else to say? Um, I would just say, your local Walmart, your Target, your pharmacy, your grocery store. Why? Because you shop there and you run into people. Yeah. Um, take anything. You bump into someone else's cart, bridge that with the gospel. You see someone struggling to reach something on a shelf, bridge that to the gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, someone asks you about something, Bridge that to the gospel. Yeah. You're at work. I'll think about this. Are you and God the only one at your job that knows you're a Christian? Ooh. And if it is, you got to fix that soon and fast. Yeah. Because you might not be in that job for much longer. God might put you somewhere yeah. else. And you, 
wherever you are, your surroundings, you are that light. And how is a light doesn't enclose itself and envelop itself to only shine to itself. It shines to everybody else around it. Yeah. And it, if you are not, or if you're liked by everybody and everybody loves you and everybody thinks you're great and everybody likes every single aspect about you, that says something. I know John Ramirez, the next Satanist, said the biggest demonic church in uh, the biggest demonic spirit in the church is a spirit of compromise. Are you compromising the gospel when you're speaking to people? Is that why they like you so much? Because you don't poke them a little bit. Yeah. I'm not saying be a jerk. I'm no. saying the gospel that you speak, it convicts people who are not in and of that gospel. Yeah. And, and you, you, you will be rejected at times. Mm -hmm. It comes with the territory. Yeah. Uh, I love what Greg Laurie says. Like, if you share Jesus with somebody and they get all mad at you and they leave the room, don't think that everything you did was in vain. Because maybe that night before they go to bed, they're thinking about Jesus. Yeah. And so you you don't know. Like, only God could. Uh, one day we'll see the results of our our work of sharing the good news with people. Remember, it's the good news, not the bad news. Mm -hmm. You want to see the bad news, watch the 6 o'clock news. That's the bad news. But the good news is that Jesus loves you. That Jesus has a plan for your life. That Jesus wants to forgive you. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. That he promises you eternal life. He promises you the forgiveness of sins. That's the good news, mm -hmm. not the bad news. Mm -hmm. So our, our encouragement is look for opportunities to share your faith. Don't kick down doors. If the opportunity is not there, it's not there. Mm -hmm. But he, if you keep your eyes open, he'll give, God will give you opportunities. Yeah. And when he gives you the opportunity, just go for it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. Could we pray for you? So we're going to pray for you. Uh, Max, you want to pray for everybody online that, yeah. that, uh, that, that we all can have the holy boldness. Because even though that we share our faith, there, there's times... I get timid. I'm a pastor. There's times I'm timid and I get afraid. Me too. And I got to ask God to take that fear from my heart. Mm -hmm. That's right. Think about it as we close your eyes with me. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you very much for the glorious privilege of being able to communicate this gospel message to your people. Um, I pray that every single person here not be deceived and lied to by the illusion of uncomfortability. God, you did not call us to be so comfortable in every single thing we do. That cross is full with splinters. Our hands are nailed, our feet are nailed, and our head has a crown of thorns on it. Because Paul says, I am crucified with the Lord. When you called us to take up that cross, you called us to that journey that you took. And that journey that you took was ministering, healing, preaching, and loving and showing mercy and grace to everybody you encountered. And that was bestowed upon your apostles as we see in the book of Acts. So Heavenly Father, I pray that every single person watching this and everyone in our church experience the boldness. Amen. And that they experience the drive, the consideration, uh, the mercy to have upon someone and to perceive the, the love of God that he has for that one person. Because if it was just that one person, Amen. he still would have died. Yes. So we thank you, Father, for the opportunities that you've given us. And we pray, I pray that we take advantage of those. And I pray that we be bold and emboldened. And I pray that we use the, the voice that you've given us. Thank you for this study. And we pray that you be with all of us uh, the rest of this evening, the rest of this week. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. I want to add to that prayer. I pray for my son, Josiah. I pray he healed his arm. I know he had three shots today. And I'm thankful for him that he's 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 in, he's only 11 years old and he's already sharing his faith with his friends and classmates and teachers. And I, I pray that you continue to help him to share his faith, help Jaden to share his faith, help Sherry to share her faith, help uh, my brother, help Janet, help my wife and everybody, Lorena and everybody that's that's on right now. Give us all the holy boldness. Take fear away from our hearts so we could pro proclaim the truth in love.
Fill us with your Holy Spirit. You say it's not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. Help us to be your witness. Amen. Amen. Well, we love you. Thank you for joining tonight. You have a great night. We'll see you on Sunday, 12 o'clock. Uh, we'll be outdoors. Bring a sweater. Sweater up. We're going to praise God in the great outdoors. Yeah. Love you guys. Bye. See you next week. Yes. <laughs>